Now, as a brand, Buick has definitely struggled with trying to stedge their stodgy old person image here in the United States, especially for younger buyers. Now, the company started that changeover with the introduction of the uh, Encore subcompact SUV back in 2012. Now, since then, Buick dealers have been fussing at the company for a, an SUV that would slot between the too small Encore and the too large Enclave. And this week, I'm testing that exact vehicle. Let's take an in-depth look at the 2017 Buick Envision. To shed that stodgy old person image, the company has been really making all of their latest products a lot more premium, and Buick is trying to position themselves uh, as a tier two luxury brand, similar along the lines of a Lincoln, an Acura, uh, an Infiniti. And their latest crop of products certainly show a lot of promise uh, for Buick in the future. And uh, today, we're taking a look at the all new 2017 Envision. Now, as you guys know, the Envision uh, is the first Buick vehicle specifically built for the Chinese market that GM is actually importing here into the US. Now that's right, this car is built exclusively in China. They import it directly from China. And if you look at the window sticker, about 98% of these vehicles contents uh, come from the China market. So that may be a like it, or that might be a deal breaker for some buyers. Some of you may not give a crap whether the vehicle is built in China or America or not. But again, I'm going to leave that up to you. For me, that's somewhat of a disadvantage, especially for the American buyers here. Now, regarding the actual uh, position of the Envision, this slots between the too small Encore and the too large Enclave, which honestly, Buick left such a huge gap between those SUVs that the company could introduce a uh, another SUV to kind of be a little bit larger than the Envision. But if you look at this, car, this car's proportions, um, it's roughly about 15 inches longer uh, than an Encore. Um, and it's about 183 inches long. Now that puts it squarely in the, the competitors such as the Mercedes GLC, the BMW X3, the Audi Q5, the Acura RDX. Now those are all very strong competitors, which is where Buick is going to have a, a really big uphill battle with this all new Envision. Now the design definitely sports a lot of current Buick design themes. You have that uh, tri-shield insignia with the waterfall style grill, these LED accented daytime running lights with projector halogens on my tester, which is a glaring omission. A lot of competitors like the Acura RDX, the Lexus NX offer LED headlights as standard equipment. You can get a bi-xenon option, which is still a little bit low tech compared to the LED options if you guys go for the premium two uh, uh, top of the line tester, which my tester is the one notch below it. Now, you can see uh, these 19-inch wheels are included on the premium model, and Buick actually slashed the price of this model by $8,000 for the 2017 model year when they introduced a new 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder as the base motor, which honestly, most of the competitors come standard with turbo power. So it's a little bit of an interesting decision for Buick considering the fact that they wanna be more premium, more upscale. This kind of puts it more on a more um, mainstream level with that standard engine. Now you can see the rear design of the vehicle is also rather attractive. You have LED accented uh, taillights, but an incandescent brake light. Uh, these chrome exhaust tips look nice. Uh, the T badge on the back signifies that you bought the turbo motor. Uh, and overall, I think it's a much more pleasing overall silhouette versus the egg shape of the Encore. Uh, it definitely has that more, you know, baby Enclave design, which Buick will be introducing an all-new version of their large crossover uh, for 2018. But, I mean, overall, I think this is a rather pleasant-looking vehicle. But let's take a look at the interior and see how it differs from the uh, slightly conservative but pleasing uh, aspects of the exterior. Now, my tester being the premium one trim level, it does come standard with the company's smart key access system with push button start and remote start, definitely a very handy feature if you guys live in cold climates. To activate the remote start, uh, just push the lock button here, which is the center, and then press and hold this button. And the vehicle starts right up for you. Now, to unlock the door, uh, there is no sensor on the back. You actually have to touch the door handles with lock and unlock it, the little button here. So to do that, just push the, touch the door handle. The door unlocks for you. And you can see here, looking at the interior of the all-new Envision, 
Uh, it's a rather pleasant environment. I think the design is a lot more upscale looking than I expected it to be. I really like the soft, comfortable seats. They're very supportive. Uh, of course, they don't have the massage function that I showed you on the LaCrosse. This is a lower line vehicle, but overall, you're going to be very impressed with the interior when you open the door. I really like the steering wheel. Much better looking than the LaCrosse that I showed you guys um, earlier. I think it's just a much more youthful, sporty looking design. Now, stepping inside, of course, it has a perfect step in height because this is a compact SUV. Another reason why American buyers love it. And shutting the door, it sounds really solid when it shuts. This is an all new platform. It's not shared with the current generation Equinox is what Buick likes to tell us. Now, to get it out of remote start mode, just put your foot on the brake and then push the button here to turn on all electronics. Now you can see the gauge cluster is very similar to what I showed you guys in the, little, the new LaCrosse. Um, the new uh, Acadia also has a similar gauge cluster where it's kind of an LCD and an analog uh, combined. It's a very pleasant looking upscale looking instrumentation display. Now looking at the rest of this interior, you can see it's very unbuick like honestly. I mean, the design is rather nice looking. Aside from the shiny fake wood that's used very liberally across this interior, um, you find a lot of nice details. You have stitching on the dashboard. Uh, this portion right here is actually soft touch with more stitching uh, throughout the lower part of the center console. Uh, the door panel has uh, even more stitching, similar to the dash, uh, and it's soft touch on the upper part here, more of that fake wood, uh, some satin finish accents here, and then it's a nice padded armrest right here. Now the window is one touch for the driver side for the rear, so actually all four are one touch, so that's nice that Buick included that. Uh, and like I said, I really like the steering wheel. It's a heated steering wheel as well. It's got really nice um, contrasting stitching for the leather. Uh, nice 9.3 grip, and it's a nice sporty looking small diameter steering wheel. It definitely uh, makes this vehicle feel a lot more younger versus that LaCrosse that I showed you. Now, um, looking at the center stack here, this is of course the eight inch IntelliLink display, and it does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So again, this is not your grandpa's Buick. It has all the technology that a lot of younger buyers are expecting nowadays. I'm um, going back here, this is basically the, the same version that you're going to find on other Buick and GM products. You can see the map display. It's not going to be as nice as the Cadillac Q system, where it has that proximity sensor. But I like the fact that this system has traditional knobs, volume knob, tuning knob, nice big buttons, well labeled. Down here is where I have my issue. The climate controls, while there are some hard buttons, really, really hate this stupid touchpad for the uh, temperature and for the heated seats. I just think that it's very finicky. It doesn't always register when I first touch it, which is really annoying when you're trying to drive. You, it requires you to take your eyes off the road to make sure you're touching the right portion. Buick has just given me a knob or a traditional button here to control this, so I would like to see the company fix that in the coming years. I like the design of the vents, even though they are on the low side, but overall I think it's a nice looking design. Uh, when you put the vehicle into reverse, you do have a backup camera. It has parking sensors and trajectory. I believe the up-level trims will give you like an automatic parallel parking function. My tester, of course, doesn't have it because it's one notch below the premium uh, spec trim. Uh, coming down here, this is the six-speed automatic transmission selector. I'm surprised that Buick didn't go with an eight-speed auto. The new Malibu introduced that, and then they've, they've got a new nine-speed auto that they're, uh, they're, that they're going to be introducing in the new Equinox. So in terms of the transmission, uh, the Envision is definitely a little bit behind. Um, it does have a manual shift mode here with these buttons. There's a low, that's how you, to access it, you have to put it into low and then you can change the gears manually. Cup holders are here. You have uh, decent storage right there for some sunglasses in addition to the sunglass holder that's up here. Now opening the center console here, you'll find two USB ports, a decent size um, overall storage uh, and aux port uh, so you can hide all your stuff down there. Uh, the glove compartment, it's damped, it's lined with felt. It's a little bit small. Um, there is another shelf here that you can put some, maybe your cell phone in there, uh, which is an interesting place to put some storage. Uh, my tester doesn't have the Pano sunroof option. That's like $1,500 extra if you want it. So instead you have plenty of headroom. And like I said, the seats are pretty comfortable. They're heated. Um, you can get cooled seats if you guys go for the premium two trim, but of course mine is uh, lacking that. Now overall, I think the design again is pleasant. It's relatively spacious in, spacious in here. Uh, and you do sit up nice and high, very good sight lines, so a lot of American buyers are definitely going to like the interior of the all-new Envision. Checking out the rear seat of the Envision, you can see it's also a relatively spacious environment. And the seats themselves, they actually recline, uh, they slide forward and back, so it's a very nice back seat. You can see the floor is actually flat for the second, the set middle passenger, so you can fit uh, three people across here, but stepping inside, I'm happy to say that, you know, the, the seat's surprisingly nice. The, the bench cushion is really good for me. Shutting the door 
you have the stitching and the soft touch that carries over, so that's nice. Um, you do have dual map pockets back here, and then Buick actually gives you separate climate controls, so it's a tri-zone climate control. You have two USB ports, heated rear seats. I mean, that's really nice, honestly. Some competitors don't offer that, um, such as the Acura RDX. Um, Looking down here, you do have a nice fold down armrest here with some more, uh, with some cup holders. The seats, like I said, they are 60 40, they, they slide, they recline. So overall, I think the back seat is relatively pleasant uh, in this all new Envision. Now my tester does include a power tailgate. It is standard on this particular trim level. And when you open up the cargo area, you can see the Envision offers plenty of cargo space. With the second row of seats up, uh, you're gonna find about 27 cubic feet of space. There is no third row available on this vehicle, of course. Uh, but when you fold down those seats by just flipping this lever here, you can see the seat folds down, at least it tries to. You gotta have to keep pushing it. But when you get everything folded, you're gonna get about 57 cubic feet of space, which is pretty good, uh, pretty class competitive. I think the Volvo XC90 or XC60 offers a little bit more space but overall this is a very uh, practical vehicle looking underneath here you do have a little bit more storage and then Buick still gives you a spare tire uh, so that's definitely nice to have if you guys want to have that in your new vehicle the hood of the new Envision, there isn't really much excitement going on. This is the company's up-level motor. It's the, the new 2-liter turbocharged direct injection four-cylinder. Um, it makes 252 horsepower in this application and 260 pound-feet of torque. Again, class competitive with the standard engines and a lot of other luxury manufacturers. Now, Buick does offer a down-level down engine from this, a 2.5-liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder with like 197 horsepower. I haven't driven that model yet, um, but I believe it comes with automatic start-stop. Same with this vehicle, which isn't defeatable. It's one of the most smoothest transitions I've ever experienced. I'll show you guys that in the test drive. Now, fuel economy uh, is actually a little bit on the lower side considering this is a turbo four. It's rated at 20 in the city, 26 on the highway. Uh, with all-wheel drive like my test here, it all goes through that six-speed automatic transmission. Now, properly equipped, this vehicle will tow about 1,500 pounds. It weighs just over 4,000 pounds, so it is a little bit on the heavier side, uh, but let's get it out on the road and see how it all works, shall we? So as you guys know, this segment of vehicle, the compact crossover luxury segment, I mean, it's fierce. There's a lot of co competition out there, and really the, you know, the Audi Q5, the Acura RDX, the BMW X3, the new, the new Mercedes GLC, which just won Motor Trends SUV of the Year award, I mean, those are all fantastic choices. So how could you possibly choose this Buick Envision over, you know, such great you know, offerings out there? I mean, um, an initial glance, you know, this is a rather pleasant vehicle. I haven't actually had a chance to drive this on a longer drive. I drove it briefly uh, back in September, but let's get out on the road and see how it all, you know, works together, shall we? Now again, the start-stop is active right there. I didn't even notice the engine shut off. This is the smoothest automatic start-stop I've ever experienced without a doubt, which is good because you can't shut it off. Now, as I expected, the two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder four just goes about goes about its business really quietly. You don't even notice the engine. It's super subdued. I mean, Buick's quiet tuning chassis uh, is definitely in full effect here, and there's really no noise, no engine noise, no road noise, very little wind noise. And for a turbo engine, the, the power delivery is surprisingly linear. I don't feel much turbo lag, but what I do feel is the power abruptly take, tapering off at like 5,500 RPM, which again, you're not gonna be pushing this thing like a drag racer like the way I drive it. But, you know, I like to see how a turbo engine feels at high RPM. This one definitely doesn't enjoy it, but it's got lots of mid-range torque, lots of torque down low, which is very important when you're driving this type of vehicle. Now, going down the road, the visibility in here is fantastic big side mirrors. My tester has blind spot monitoring with her cross traffic alert. Really great visibility. The hood's nice and low. And the ride quality is really good. I think this car rides really nicely. Uh, but so does every lot of other vehicles in the class. But again, um, I drove a Lexus NX200T and I think that this car feels a little bit more solid and rides a little bit more comfortably uh, than that Lexus did. Let's turn off the traction control. The engine shut off again there. If I could find the damn button. Where is the button to turn off the traction control? Oh, right here. Turn off the traction control. Let's see if I can get the tires to spin out. 
Nope. Now this is an all-wheel drive vehicle, of course, so I wasn't expecting the tires to peel out or anything, but um, it feels like a zero to 60 time in the mid seven second range, which is definitely about a second slower than the German competitors. The Germans are gonna be in the six and a half second range for their turbo engines. Uh, this is very similar again to the Lexus NX200T. An Acura RDX with a V6 will just smoke this and it makes a better noise for me. Although it doesn't have the, the mid-range grunt, this, this motor actually has more torque than what you get in the V6 in the Acura uh, RDX. But, you know, going down the road here, this car definitely feels like a very sophisticated, stiff premium car. Now, it's not stiff in the ride, just very solid structure. And that's gonna give you a feeling of quality uh, when you're going down the road. And surprisingly, going down the road, the Envision handles corners relatively nicely. I mean, the steering uh, is relatively quick and precise, just numb. It's it's a little bit light in its feel, which is you know what I expect in this class. It's not a sports sedan. This is just supposed to be a comfortable, you know, daily driver. And but you know when you go around these corners, this vehicle handles it relatively well. And again, like I said, I, I really am impressed with how quiet this car is. It's definitely quieter than some of the Japanese competitors, specifically the Lexus and the Acura for sure have more road noise in this car. This is really nice quiet tuning. This is on par with what I expect the Germans to be. Uh, when you are comparing interior uh, noise levels. Now, regarding a few driver assistance tech features, my tester has the blind spot monitoring. It has forward collision alert with the safety alert seat, so it'll vibrate the seat if you cross your lane. It has um, active lane keeping assist, which is nice. Uh, it is missing full speed range adaptive cruise control with pedestrian detection. That is part of a driver confidence package that you get on the premium two uh, trim level, which my tester, again, is not is a premium one trim, so you can't get that feature. I don't like how Buick forces you to get the top of the line model to get that safety features, whereas some competitors are making it available on lower trims as a, a standalone option, or they're just making it a standard uh, entirely. Now the six-speed automatic in this car is definitely down, you know, two or three gears compared to its competitors, but it shifts relatively smoothly, just a little bit slowly. And there were times where, when I put my foot down hard, the transmission would um, kind of uh, scaringly uh, drop a gear and then it would clunk when it dropped a gear, which I thought was a little bit concerning. But, you know, overall, if you don't drive this vehicle at 1010, um, you're going to find the transmission to be inoffensive, the engine to be inoffensive. I mean, there's a lot about this car that just is very inoffensive, which is kind of important, honestly. It's not something that's going to make you think, I hate this, I hate this, other than a few little minor details here. But overall, you're just going to drive this car, you know, to and from work on long trips, and you're going to be very pleased uh, with the overall feel and driving dynamics of this car. But Talking about the fuel economy, as I mentioned earlier, um, the fuel economy is a little disappointing for a turbocharged four-cylinder. It's basically on par with some V6 competitors. Uh, and this one rated at 2026 20, definitely is a little bit on the low end. And I've actually been averaging about 16 miles to the gallon in mostly city um, in my you know few days that I've had this car. Now on the highway, I pushed it to about 27, 28, so it can do better than the you know 26, but I imagine when GM replaces the six-speed auto with the eight or nine-speed auto they've got coming, um, they will improve the fuel economy. This should be getting over 30 miles to the gallon, so a little disappointing that it doesn't do that you know currently right now. Now, talking about the price, this is my biggest issue with the Envision. Now, when this car first came out for 2016, it started at like 42,000 because you could only get the premium with all-wheel drive and the two-liter turbo, which is definitely expensive. Uh, however, for 2017, Buick has cut the price by $8,000. So this car now starts at just over $34,000 plus a $900 destination charge. Um, now that makes it about $1,000 less expensive than an Acura RDX and a Lexus NX200T. Um, about $5,000 cheaper than a German competitor like a Mercedes TLC, an Audi Q5, a BMW X3. However, the Lincoln MKC uh, starts about $1,000 less than this Buick. So again, Buick still has some work to do in the US before they're gonna be considered a premium brand uh, like Acura, like Lincoln, like Infiniti, for example. Now, my tester being the premium one, it comes standard with all-wheel drive, it comes standard with that two-liter turbo. This car starts at $41,000. Um, 
So again, that's a pretty good amount of money considering you can, you can get a German competitor for that same cost. Now, my tester has not very many options on it. It has like the, the navigation option, um, add in the destination, of course. This car stickers for just over $44,000, which again, that's a lot of money considering you can get an Acura RDX Advance with all-wheel drive for $44,000. And that actually has a couple of features that this Buick doesn't have. Now, keep in mind, if I wanted to get all the driver assistance tech, the driver confidence package, the Pano sunroof, the buy scene on headlights on the premium too. That model can easily reach $49,000, just under $50,000, which honestly, that is extremely overpriced. I would not pay that much, to be honest, for this vehicle. Now, what I would do, um, you know, for $50,000, I would probably go to a German competitor. Now, you would get a Mercedes GLC, an Audi Q5, a BMW X3. They're going to be around $50,000 for a moderately equipped model. But again, you can also equip a GLC to be like $60,000 if you guys aren't careful with the options. But you know, if you guys are a little bit more conservative, you know, you can get the Germans or the Japanese for roughly the same cost as this Buick. So again, I'm a little, you know, concerned with the price. I think this car is extremely overpriced. It should be wearing a Cadillac badge if they're gonna be charging $45,000 for my tester or near $50,000 for a fully loaded model. But, you know, overall, this isn't a bad vehicle. I think that Buick has a little bit of work to do still with their image. Uh, and to be honest, with this price, again, they should be charging Cadillac, or it should be a Cadillac badge instead of this Buick badge uh, at the price levels that they're asking for. But anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, my overview of this 2017 uh, Buick Envision. If you're looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.